this is why this is why they oppose healthcare mm-hmm. for all. This is why they oppose looking at reports where we see uh, inequity and death primarily coming to black people. There's a new study that has revealed black Americans have suffered nearly 2 million more deaths, excess deaths, deaths that did not have to occur at that time than others over the past 20 years. I'm going to go to the video, here it is. Health disparities among black Americans are considered a public health crisis. Now a new study finds over two decades, the black population experienced more than 1.6 million excess deaths and 80 million years of life lost compared to the white population. All the disadvantage that black people incur ends up being translated both at very young ages and in in middle age and older age into enormous amounts of years lost and early deaths. And and this is really, I I think, something that's unacceptable. Dr. Harlan Krumholtz with Yale School of Medicine authored the research that finds heart disease and cancer contributed most to the excess deaths, as well as infant mortality. Race is a social construct. It really doesn't have a strong root in, in biology. People aren't born predetermined that their life expectancies are going to be shorter, but but by where they live, the exposures that they have, the way the medical care system treats them simply because of their race. During the course of the study, researchers saw some improvement in reducing the gap, but progress stalled with the economic downturn, then COVID-19 hit. And it led us back to a situation where we were no better than we were 20 years ago. These are preventable deaths, and it's just up to us to configure society in a way that's responsive to the needs of this community and can recognize our obligation. I agree. Now look at COVID. I want you to look at COVID, for example. Black people experienced the reality of an inequity inside of healthcare. So what happened? What really went down? Well, because of the disconnects that have been there forever, uh, certain individuals were unable to get the proper treatment or even testing required, right? You have inequity in healthcare. You have many who did not have access to a doctor. We're talking about individuals who are across the spectrum, black, white, brown, but not insured, not insured, but should have been, okay? Because this country should make sure everyone has healthcare insurance. You see, if we did truly have a universal system that was robust and active, efficient, you realize that a whole lot of white people too would have never caught cold and never died. Why? Because we all live together in this country, all of us. And so when you decide to other a particular demographic, a particular group, because you think, well, those individuals, you know, they're not of my status. When something like this happens, all of a sudden we're all equal, we're all even, right? And what becomes a tragedy in my community becomes a tragedy in yours. So this is cause and effect, an opportunity to address it. 80 million years, 80 million years is what the report said. That is your gap. Those 80 million years were taken away from black communities. Why? Because of bad policy. Bad policy kills people. The dots have been connected. Let me give you more insight and information. These are takeaways because so many black people die young with many years of life ahead of them. Their higher mortality rate from 1999 to 2020 resulted in a cumulative loss of more than 80 million years of life compared with the white population. That's what the study shows. A companion study estimates that racial and ethnic inequities cost the US at least the minimum 421 billion in 2018. That's based on medical expenses, lost productivity and premature death. Here are the economic factors. High mortality rates among black people have less to do with genetics than with the country's long history of discrimination, which has undermined educational, housing and job opportunities for generations of black people, said Clyde Yancey, an author of the study and chief of cardiology at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. 
There are also environmental factors. Let's go to it. Black neighborhoods, black communities that were redlined in the 1930s, designated to high risk for mortgages and other investments, remain poorer and sicker today. Yancey said, formerly redlined zip codes also had higher rates of COVID infection and death. It's very clear that we have an uneven distribution of health. Yancey said, we're talking about the freedom to be healthy. As long as we continue to contextualize this as a problem for one person or one group, one race, we will always think that everyone coming together is not required, but it is. It's going to take a coalition response. There's more, Uh, being more educated doesn't affect racial health disparities. Black women, we've talked about this before, black women with a college degree are more likely to die from pregnancy complications than white women without even a high school diploma. Although researchers can't fully explain this disparity, Branch said it's possible that stress, including stress from systemic racism, takes a greater toll on the health of black mothers than previously recognized. There was a study cited at Morehouse School of Medicine that highlighted medical doctors tend to not believe their black patients. Thus, the diagnosis and the treatment is not appropriate to the disease. There's more black people and mental health. Let's talk about that. Black people shoulder a great burden of grief, which can undermine the mental health and physical health of anyone, say Kalia Johnson. Chief pediatric, uh, chief pediatric care at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Given the high morality, excuse me, high mortality rate throughout the lifespan, black people are more likely than white people to be grieving the death of a close family member at any point in their lives. All of this creates a life of expectancy issue. In 2021, non-Hispanic white Americans had a life expectancy rate of 76 years, okay? Non-Hispanic black Americans could expect to live only 71 years. Much of that disparity is explained by the fact that non-Hispanic black newborns are two and a half times as likely to die before their first birthday as non-Hispanic whites. Non-Hispanic black mothers are more than three times as likely as non-Hispanic white mothers to die from a pregnancy related complication. The, The point of this study is to help people, especially those in professional healthcare industries and health allied industries, to help them understand that their bias, their bias permeates in the culture of their industry. And everyone has it. All of us have some level of bias. Unconscious bias is present, but not dealing with it or acting as if it does not exist. Well, that part is evil and that leads to death. All right, Jeff Thoughts. Pew Research Center survey from 2023 says that white people are less likely to wear a mask, less worried about spreading COVID to others and are less supportive of safety measures after learning COVID disproportionately harms communities of color. People who respond to those surveys and are subject to these studies, they know what the numbers and data suggest, but will still openly deny what we currently know about bias, whether it's intentional or not, in front of black, brown and native people in this country. We are a community, a really big one that should support one another, especially when it comes to healthcare, which is very much lacking in this country. But we obviously don't, and we're okay with certain people dying needlessly before their time. That is as simple as it gets and as true as it gets. We are okay with the deaths of certain people. All right, we got the video. Okay, we're gonna come to it on the other side of the break. It's a hell of a video.